Hi all, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm David and I'm here with Megana and Surish to present the results of the AVA challenge at ActivityNet 2020, also known as Task C, Spatiotemporal Action Localization. AVA is a family of video data sets based on the task of recognizing human actions and localizing them in space and time. The original data set was AVA Actions, released in 2018, followed by AVA Speech and AVA Active Speaker, which focus on the important subtask of identifying faces um, which are speaking at each frame. This year, we introduced an expanded actions data set we call AVA Kinetics. The challenge this year includes two tasks, AVA Kinetics and Active Speaker, and we'll begin with AVA Kinetics. The task AVA Actions um, is trying to solve is to identify 80 basic human actions and to localize them in space and time wherever they appear in the video. An important characteristic of AVA is that at each frame, we annotate multiple people performing multiple actions. This means that contextual cues can't be used as a simple trick to solve the action recognition task. For example, the presence of a birthday cake in the video doesn't imply that the action for everyone in the scene must be blowing out the candles. The AVA action vocabulary consists of 80 actions, which can be grouped into individual pose actions, person-person interactions, and person-object actions. Only 60 of the most common actions are used in the challenge. So what makes AVA difficult? When we first set out to create AVA, we anticipated that temporal and spatial relationships would be critically important for recognizing actions. For example, sit is followed by stand, which is followed by shake hands. To explore this theory, we densely annotated 15 minute continuous segments of movies uh, with labels provided at one frame per second. This had two effects. First, it limited the total number of unique movies annotated. So although the data set has over 1.6 million action labels, it contains just over 400 unique movies. And second, um, it produces a long tail distribution over classes. These are a couple of the factors that make the data set challenging. So two years after its release, the best mean average precision score on AVA have has increased to only 34%. So significant headroom remains in this challenge. On the other end of the spectrum from AVA is the widely used kinetics data set, which includes 700 different classes with at least 600 examples each. Each clip is from a different video, hence there's a very wide diversity of scenes. However, kinetics only annotates a single action class for each 10 second video clip. Performance on kinetics is comparatively quite good. Methods can achieve a top one precision of over 75%. If you're not familiar with kinetics, kinetics is the basis of the previous challenge in this workshop, uh, ActivityNet Task B, Trimmed Activity Recognition. I encourage you to watch that video to learn more about kinetics and the methods that have been used successfully on it. So the complementary nature of these two data sets seems promising. Would it be possible to move the needle on spatiotemporal action localization by combining the dense atomic labels of AVA with the wide diversity of scenes of kinetics? So this inspired us to create the new AVA kinetics data set, which augments the original AVA actions data set by annotating a large number of clips from kinetics with the dense bounding boxes and atomic action labels from the AVA vocabulary. As you can see, the AVA kinetics data set is much larger, 1.6 times as many annotated frames, but over 500 times as many unique videos in the data set. It also opens the door to potentially co-training on both kinetics classification and AVA detection label sets. The addition of kinetics videos also affects the class distribution. 
As you can see, the original AVA distribution in blue is extremely long-tailed. With the addition of kinetics videos in green, certain classes attain um, many more examples, such as listen to music, the, the green, tall green bar in the middle. Um, but the fundamentally long-tailed nature of the data set remains. So the task this year is to locate 60 of the most common AVA actions in space and time on the combined AVA kinetics test set. The performance metric is the mean average precision evaluated at 0.5 IOU. Now, I'm excited to present the results of the challenge. So this year, we had 11 teams participating and 33 total submissions, which is a decrease from last year. Uh, I expect, unfortunately, that the challenges presented by COVID-19 played a role here. Um, nevertheless, the winning team was able to beat last year's score by a very impressive 5.37 points of MAP. So without further ado, the winners of the 2020 AVA Kinetics Challenge are in third place, Team Fujitsu from Zhan Tanzu. In second place, the team from ByteDance and Shanghai Jiao Tong University. And in first place, the winner is Team Akarnet, led by, uh, led by Siu Chen. So congratulations to the winner. Ordinarily, there'd be a whole uh, workshop audience clapping for you, so you'll have to just settle for, for the three of us. So congratulations. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Megana to present an analysis of the results. Thank you, David. Um, congratulations to the winners. I'm going to present some findings from the results of this year's challenge. To start with, here's an overview of the results of the top five teams along to start with, here's a result of um, here's an overview of the results from top five teams, um, along with our baselines computed from computed using the video action transformer network, and also the result results from the last two years winners. As David mentioned, the highest performance on this task still remains to be only thirty nine point six six two percent indicating the large head, headroom that still remains. However, we saw some significant improvements over the last two years, both via the training data available and the architectures explored. Um, it is particularly exciting uh, to see kinetics test set getting around 36% MAP, given that it accounts to only 60% of the examples. Um, in the next slide, we look at the example distribution again. Um, to recap, AVA is a classic example of long tail distribution where the top 10 classes have around 100 times more examples as compared to the remaining 70. As we can observe from this chart, kinetics does not, does not alter that distribution heavily, although it does increase the relative number of examples of some individual classes. Through annotating kinetics, uh, with, through annotating kinetics videos with AVA labels, we attempt to add a diverse set of examples to each class. Um, but not to resolve um, the issue with the long tail distribution. I would like to reiterate that there are still a bunch of classes with very few examples adding to the complexity of AVA task. Um, in the next slide, I'll, um, we'll look at uh, the per class statistics. Particularly, um, I want to th talk through some interesting observations from the per class performance numbers, in particular, how they fared against the number of examples we have for it. As you see from this chart, it roughly follows the expected pattern of higher the number of examples, better the performance. Uh, of course, with a few exceptions. Um, please do note here that the y-axis um, is log scaled, and um, most examples, again, have um, fewer than uh, 10,000 examples. We'll go, into the for we'll go into further details around um, individual groups of classes in the next few slides. Um, in the next slide, here we have the classes with highest performance. Um, eight out of these 10 classes also fall under um, the list of top 10 classes with the highest number of examples. A couple of classes that stand out here are answer phone and play musical instruments. They are on the second row and the last and the third row from the last. If you look at answer phone uh, on the second row, it performs on par with the top performing class at 82.72 average precision, despite having 40 times less examples. Now, if you look at the last two columns, which have the ranks of each of the classes based on their performance in last year's winning entry and this year's winning entry, 
we observe that the classes maintain their ranks more or less. Um, eight of the top 10 performing classes ranked top 10 last year as well. Um, and in, in, in this context, play musical instrument class in the third row from bottom is, is uh, an anomaly. It, um, it scaled up the ranks quite a bit, um, although it saw 370% increase in the number of examples, the total example count is not that high in this case. Um, this leads us to believe that it benefited particularly from the diversity of examples that kinetics could, uh, could um, provide. In the next slide, we'll look at um, the classes with which fared the least. Um, this is a bit unsurprising, um, especially because the classes that performed um, low are also the ones with low example count, low change in example count, and also low, low performance in the last year's um, performances, in the last year's winner results as well. Um, in the next slide, um, I have a bunch of, I have a, um, um, a couple of classes with which saw the highest improvement in performance. It's interesting um, uh, to note here that we observe the same pattern with our results computed from the Video Action Transformer Network as well. Um, the right side image is um, from our archive paper um, that explains the data set and the results um, and, and does analysis on the results. Um, it's it'll be it's 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 interesting it's interesting to think whether um, these results, how much of these improvements are coming from um, the models itself, and how much are coming from just the additional data that these classes are seeing. Um, now I'll pass it over to Saurish to present the results of the Active Speaker Challenge. Thanks, Meghna. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Saurish, and I'm here to present the results of the Active Speaker Track here. Uh, so in 2019, we released the active speaker data set with dense temporal labels for each face in the data set, indicating whether the face is speaking or not and if they're audible. So the GIF that you see on the left here shows the labels visualized on a single scene um, that should help capture the dynamic nature of conversational settings. The active speaker label is indicated by the color of the face bounding box, where red indicates that a face is not speaking, a uh, green indicates that a face is speaking, and a yellow bounding box indicates that a face is probably speaking but is not audible in the audio track. Um, so you can see here how many changes of state there are in a single scene of a group taking a photo. Uh, so this data set um, and the held out counterpart of this data set are the basis of the active speaker challenge track uh, for, the, for the AVA uh, track at Activity Network Show. Um, so for more details of the data set and other examples of the label data, we have some pointers in the block on the right here. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So the active speaker detection task for the challenge is visually grounded. For every face that is in the eval set, we ask the participants to predict whether the face is speaking. And like with the actions challenge, the eval metric we use here is mean average precision also. Uh, so on the next slide, we can take a look at the data set stats to remind everybody um, about the distribution of the data here. So in total for training, we released about 38 hours of label tracks with a threes to one ratio of speaking to non-speaking segments. Um, and on the next slide, we'll see the, the distribution of the held out labels, or rather not the distribution, but the aggregate statistics. Uh, so the set of videos here are exactly the same as in the EVA actions task. For training in total, we had about 3.65 3 million label bounding boxes. And we held out just over 2 million label bounding boxes. Uh, that was part of the, the challenge that the participants' models worked on. So let's take a look at the baseline model now on, on the next, next slide, which we presented in our archive paper. Um, it uses a two-stream architecture with pixels as input on the image side and a spectrogram representation of the audio as input on the audio side. And this goes through two individual towers. There's a modality fusion step and a small network on top of the fusion that leads to the final prediction that is made. Uh, more details on the network structure and our analysis are in the linked archive paper. But on the next slide, we'll capture a couple of the cases where it looked like our model had the most difficulty. So 
we can see here that as face size decreases, the model performance uh, got worse. And the presence of background noise significantly affected model performance also. Uh, this is not particularly surprising. Um, these models can be more robust on both the visual and the audio analysis ends. And when we released this data set, we were really excited to see uh, what the community would do to tackle some of these challenges going forward. Uh, they did not disappoint in 2019. The, the winning uh, submissions beat our baseline. And that was the same in 2020. And with that, let's find out who the winner of the 2020 challenge was on the next slide. Uh, so congratulations. The 2020 winners are Juan Leon Alcazar and Pablo Arbelaez from Universidad de los Andes. Uh, congratulations again. Um, and we hope to hear from them later in this segment. Uh, in particular, though, what was exciting about the, the work that they did was the analysis paradigm uh, that they used for modeling the active speaker task. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So when we started working on active speaker detection on the AVA data set, it was a step towards growing research to better understanding dynamic conversational settings. And that includes more work than active speaker detection. So the AVA data set with 15-minute movie clips contained the kind of conversational structure and richness that, that can enable this kind of analysis. Um, and we're really excited to see what the research community can do with it. Uh, next slide, please. So in the past year, there have been a number of works uh, that have made use of the active speaker data set, um, specifically the, the first three that we've listed here. Um, and they're particularly exciting because they've come at, it, come at this task from different directions. So Alcazar et al. 2020, who are also the winners of this challenge, model relationships between multiple speakers over longer time horizons. Uh, Sharma et al. used a cross-modal neural network. Um, and they used this to learn a common representation that they applied to both the speech activity and the active speaker detection tasks. Uh, there's also been work in neurophysiology-inspired approaches to modality fusion. And finally, Ding et al. have um, applied audio-video synchronization method to address the task of speaker diarization uh, This This has been an exciting year for research in this direction. And we're glad that the data set's useful to the community. And we hope to see more of this in the future. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to learn more about the data set or see the uh, reports and results of the challenge, we encourage you to visit us at research.google.com slash Ava. Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Ting Pan from Chinese Hong Kong University, and my colleague Su Yu Chen from Peking University. We are representing our team, MM Lab ACR, to represent our winning solution in the AVA Kinetics Crossover Challenge. We first thank the community for organizing this workshop and challenge. First, I will give an overview of the task of this year's challenge. The goal of spatial temporal localization is given a video clip to localize all the actors and recognize their actions. The task is validated using mean average precision on each annotated frames. In the image on the right side, it shows the detection in green with class predictions on top and ground to truth in red with categorical labels at the bottom. There is some difference in this year's challenge. Kinetics videos with AVA style annotations are added. There are 238,000 new video, which is almost 500 times of the size of the original AVA dataset. Next slides, we are going to introduce the details of our winning solutions. For the challenge, we use slow, fast networks together with our newly proposed actor-context-actor relation networks. 
and the long-term feature banks. We first used Kinetic 700 to train over backbone models on classification task. Then we train over reasoning module with Ava Kinetics dataset on the localization task. Code, model, and preprint with more details can be found in the following links. Now let's see how to localize action given a video clip. A simple solution will be similar to fast RCN. We start with a video input clip. First, we extract spatial temporal feature from it. We use a person detector to get potential actor locations. Then for each of these locations, we can extract spatial temporal representations using ROI align operations. Finally, we predict action categories for each actor. The question is that, are these representations good enough to recognize actions? In general, for recognized actions, it often requires looking beyond the person. Reasoning over the interaction with the context, including other people and objects in the scene. Take this figure as an example. To recognize the action right of the person in the red bonding box, we need to observe that he is inside a car and there is a driver next to him. There exist two types of relation modeling for spatial temporal localization. First type focuses on interactions between actors. For example, the relation between the blue and red actor. On the other hand, there are methods that revert spatial temporal context. In this case, it performs relation reasoning by identifying spatial regions that have highest correlation with the actor. In this image, the steering wheel with the blue actor. However, these two attempts will struggle on recognizing the action right being performed by the red actor, since either of these relations, actor-actor or actor-context, can provide sufficient clues. It is difficult to infer the actions of the red actor solely given its relation with the blue actor or with the scene context, in this case, the steering wheel. To overcome this problem, we propose to capture high order relation between two actors based on their respective first order relations with the context, being able to identify action right of the actor by reasoning over the interaction between blue actor and the context, which is drive. Given the need of reasoning high order relations, we propose an actor context actor relation network named ACARNET to deduce high order relations between multiple actors and context. ACAR takes as input video context feature and actor spatial temporal representations, and it outputs high order relation features to assist action recognition. In details, we compute first order relation between actor and context through a series of operations like concat, tail, and convolution. Next, our proposed high order relation reasoning operator based on attention mechanisms, we compute high order relation between multiple actors, modeling links established on those first order relations. Beyond what we can learn from the input clip, complex videos do also need long-term temporal reasoning. Due to computational limitations, current state-of-the-art video models only works on short clips from 2 to 4 seconds, thus ignoring the long-term context. Inspired by previous works like long-term feature banks, which create a feature bank over a large time span, to facilitate 
first order actor actor relation reasoning across a long period of video. We created an actor context feature bank, which is built upon first order relation features. Equip it with such relation feature bank, or a carnet can leverage high order relation reasoning operator for reasoning actor context actor relations over a much longer time span, therefore better capturing what is happening in the entire video. Now, my colleague Si Yuchen will continue with more details about our solution. Okay, now I will describe some details about several instantiations of our detection pipeline, which are used in our submitted solution to the challenge. We use slow fast networks with 101 or 152 layers as the backbone network. To generate offline actor proposals, we use faster RCN with FPN and TSD where TSD stands for Taskware Spatial Disentanglement. We try different action classification heads on top of the backbone network and the actor proposals. The simplest baseline is a linear head, which corresponds to the simple approach mentioned earlier. A better method is to incorporate relation reasoning modules, such as our proposed actor context actor relation network or a carnet. We also extend relation reasoning with long-term support, including actor feature bank and our proposed ACFB, which is actor context feature bank. All backbone networks are pre-trained on Kinetics 700 classification task. We chose this large data set for pre-training since it leads to better performance than other datasets such as Kinetics 400 or Momentum Time. As for training schedule on AVA Kinetics, we only train for six epochs, since longer schedule causes overfitting. We find linear warm-up essential for stabilizing training as a beginning. We do not use random crop augmentation but we slightly jitter the actor bounding boxes during training. The default scale for inference is 256 pixels. When performing model ensemble, we apply the standard test method with three scales and horizontal flips. For test server submissions, we retrain the models with both training and validation data. In the end, we merged predictions of 20 models, which include combinations of several different backbones and classification heads. We obtained 40.5 MAP on AVA Kinetics validation set. The performance slightly dropped to 39.6 on test server. That's all for implementation details, and now I will present some numbers to analyze our model's performance. Let us first investigate the effect of different classification heads. We use a 101 layer slow fast network to carry out the comparison. We can see that the simple linear head has nearly 33 MAP, which is already a very good result. But switching to our Acarnet still brings about a significant 1.6 increase in MAP. This highlights the importance of modeling high order relations. Further, adding long term support gives a total boost of nearly 3 MAP. We also tried a more advanced backbone with 152 layers, which brings some extra improvement in performance. We submitted a train plus validation version of this 152 layer model to the test server, and we can see that the performance almost did not drop. Now, let us focus on the AVA part. We analyze the effect of adding kinetics data by training the same model on both AVA kinetics and AVA only. 
it turned out that the former training leads to 34 MAP, while the latter only reaches 32. We also perform a per-category comparison between these two models. We find that classes with few AVA training samples receive the largest boost in class average precisions. We then study the effect of different person detectors. We fine-tune two person detectors for two parts of the dataset. Our AVA detector is slightly better than the one used in PySlowFast, which was last year's winning solution. However, despite the fact that our detector reaches nearly 96 average precision on AVA validation sets, the gap between our detections and ground truth funding boxes is still large. The reason for this 8 MAP gap is still unclear. We also find that person detection on kinetics is even harder than AVA. Even though we fine-tune the detector for kinetics separately, the person detection average precision, which is 84.4, is still much lower than that of AVA. Now, let us move on to the final section of our presentation, analysis and rethinking. I will first present some examples to give a qualitative analysis. Here are two typical failure cases of our model. In the first example, the pose of the actor is kind of confusing, and our model incorrectly predicted Ben instead of the ground truth label get up. In the other case, the action label turn requires very fine-grained details to be recognized. We also spotted some minor issues about the annotations of the dataset. For instance, the persons in these three keyframes were not annotated. As another example, the three highlighted persons are all carrying or holding some object, but as you can see, none of them has these two labels. In conclusion, Despite the fact that we have reached nearly 40 MAP in this task, there are still many future directions to be explored, such as fine-grained action recognition, handling long-tailed distribution, and multitask learning. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone who has helped us in this work. Thank you for watching our video. We hope that our presentation brings insights for future research. Please feel free to contact us if you have any question. Welcome. This is the submission by the Universidad de los Andes to the ActivityNet Challenge 2020 in the task of active speaker detection. In the active speaker detection, uh, several methods have been tried, among them 3D convolution, multitask learning, and large scale pre training. Now, all these methods share something in common, which is that they focus on trying to create a better prediction for a single speaker. We propose a different approach, and that is, we will try to improve the prediction over a single speaker, not by finding better features or better estimates for this speaker, but by relating this speaker information with the information from other speakers. That is what we refer to as the active speaker context. Our method has uh, three large steps. The first step, is a feature bank creation, the second step is a pairwise refinement, and the final step is a temporal refinement. At the core of the feature bank creation, we have a two-stream network, one network that processes audio features and the other network that processes visual features. The visual features will be strictly the face crops that are provided by the AVA dataset, and the audio features are just spectrograms estimated from the audio data. 
Initially, the short-term encoder looks at a very small place in time in the net in the video. This is just about 11 frames, which is about 0.4 seconds. Now we want to provide more information to the network than this, so we create a dense sampling over the whole video. So we sample densely over the time domain, but we are also going to sample densely over every possible uh, candidate speaker, that is every person that is visible in the video. So after this, we will have a very large feature bank that is uh, actually made for every single speaker at every single time in the dataset. Now, to work with all this data, we devise what we call the Active Speaker Ensemble. This ensemble is a small data structure that has uh, two objectives. First, we're going to group the most relevant data from the speaker and what is happening around him. And then we're also going to try to direct the supervision signal towards a single speaker. So what we have in this figure is that we have a target speaker and a target time. Here the target speaker is the one in yellow, speaker 1, and the target time is time t, which is in the middle of the figure. So what we do to create an active speaker ensemble is that we look over every single speaker that may overlap with the target speaker, that is speaker 1, at time t. As you can see in this case, they are a speaker 2, which is in red, and a speaker 3, which is in green. We are discarding the speaker 4, as it does not overlap over the target time. So what we get in the upper part of the figure is what we call the context ensemble for the speaker 1 at time t. We're going to use this data ensemble to create a single prediction here, and that will be the prediction if the speaker 1 is actively speaking at time t. After we create an active speaker ensemble, we are then with the, with the problem of refining the predictions. Now, as the active speaker ensemble contains a lot more of information than the information typically used by any other neural network in the prediction, there is already some contextual information about what is happening around the single prediction. Now, it is not exactly obvious how to use all this information. You could of course put a linear layer on top of all this ensemble and get some results, but what we find is that this is not the best strategy for the problem. So what we propose is to use a pairwise refinement, and that is essentially a self-attention process that we apply over every single speaker at every single time for all the data that is contained inside the ensemble. We use the idea proposed by Baswani, but uh, we have kind of like a more similar implementation to what is the non-local block. Essentially, after applying this step, we get a weighted version of our previous ensemble, where we had light what is more important for the problem and what is more relevant for the solution, according to the time and the other domain, which will be kind of like a face domain and a speaker domain, which is every person that is involved in the current conversation. After we get this refinement ensemble, we just amount for the temporal information in the data. Essentially, this pairwise refinement, while effective, still ignores all temporal information, and we try to correct this by using a standard LSTM, which works in a sequence-to-sequence -sequence fashion. Essentially, what we get after these two steps is a weighted version of our ensemble that already contains some relevant temporal information on it. We also use this LSTM to do a little bit of dimensionality reduction just so we have a smaller layer in the final prediction. At the end of the day, after applying all this process, what we aim, what we are estimating, is an active speaker score. Essentially, it's a number between 0 and 1 that indicates us how likely is a given person, remember back from the active speaker ensemble, the person at the target time and the target person, how likely is this individual to be our active speaker for the sequence. When we perform the empirical evaluation, we realize that the active speaker ensemble produces state-of-the-art results. 
Specifically, we get about two points above any other published method in the validation set. If we compare against the activity in a challenge leaderboard from the past year, we realize we rank second. This is interesting because pretty much every other method in that leaderboard uses 3D convolutions and an ensemble of networks on 3D convolutions. We resort to a single network that uses only 2D convolutions. When we analyze the relevance of the context, we realize that if we remove the active speaker ensemble and all the refinement step, we have essentially the same number as the original solution proposed by Google. When we add the context, we see an important jump in the performance. These five points are of course important, but you only get the better result when you apply the pairwise refinement and the temporal refinement to achieve the full performance of the active speaker context. Finally, we realize that our method also decreases in performance the more faces there are and the smaller they are, but this penalty is not as big as for the baseline. We believe that as our method gathers information from many other sources, the actual size and the actual number of the faces in the scene is not as critical as it is for other methods. Finally, we see some very interesting attention patterns in our method. The first row, the top row, it shows essentially a silent scene. None of the speakers is active. So what we get here is that the attention is focused at the target time and in the target speaker and is pretty much not diverted at all in any of the elements in the ensemble. The second row in the middle, it shows on a scene where the woman is speaking. In this case, the attention is not really directed at the man that is also in the scene, but it is kind of like spread over the time, over the whole, over the whole window of sampling and targeted mostly at the woman. Finally, in scenes that are kind of ambiguous, for example, the scene at the bottom, where there is low illumination and the angle for the faces is not ideal, the attention is distributed across all the possible elements, as like the pairwise attention is trying to create the better estimate from whatever evidence it is available in the video. We invite you to check our official GitHub repository where you will find the code models and the benchmark results.